But hear her argument here. Go ahead. They don't got abortion clinics at the border. They, they're telling us as American women, specifically black American women, we need to abort our children. But if you coming across the border with your baby, oh, come to the land of milk and honey, the great land of opportunity. We'll take care of you. Joe Biden even said, I'll give illegal immigrants coming across the border $400,000 a piece. Can you imagine if they were to go to that black single mother living in the hood, not even $400,000, offer $4,000. Cause I know some black women that can make something jump with 4,000. Offer her 40,000. You know why they'll never give us that? Because they know that we'll never need them again. Welfare reminds me of, of an old man I used to date. I was in a relationship with him for 11 years. He would never marry me, right? But whenever my bills were due, I would tell him he would give me just enough. Wow. He had a whole lot of money. <laughs> he would give me just enough. Rent due. $1,200, he'd give me $1,200, not one cent over, because he knew that every month the rent was due that I would have to come back to him. He wouldn't give me $100,000 and say, here, baby, bump that, go buy you a house and start you a business, because then he felt like I wouldn't need him. The government system is the same way when it comes to black Americans. They'll never give us enough to get over and get up. It's only enough to make sure we continue to come back every 30 days so that we can remain slaves to their system. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Thoughts. It's a fact. I mean, trillions of dollars spent on the welfare system. Black Americans are poorer today than when it was established. Here's another fact. In the 1950s, under Jim Crow laws, black Americans were outpacing white Americans in terms of economic growth. It's during Jim Crow, before they even said Civil Rights Act, now you get your equal rights. Lyndon Baines Johnson, as I said, factually, the reason why they don't want people to know their history or learn history or be able to read books is because when you have those capabilities, you recognize how absolutely sinister and how avowedly racist Lyndon Baines Johnson was. Don't believe me? Check his record in the Senate, right? Every time there was a measure to help black Americans, he voted against it uh, virulently. And so you have... Right. President Lyndon Baines Johnson was a card carrying white Anglo-Saxon Protestant racist, but his racism was shielded and covered up by his signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This is the same Civil Rights Act that led to the complete shift of black Americans in to the Democratic Party ever since. So we looked at the Democrats like the Democrats were our benefactor. They did us a favor, right? In hindsight, we realize that the Republican and the Democratic Party are just different wings of the same racist bird. And we didn't know that they were enacting policies that would eventually lead to our gentrification and ethnic cleansing. Matter of fact, Lyndon Baines Johnson was so racist, this is what led to his then Secretary of State Daniel Patrick Moynihan quitting the Lyndon Baines Johnson cabinet after LBJ vetoed his black American jobs bill from his infamous Negro family report. And y'all remember in the Negro family report, in essence, Daniel Patrick Moynihan said, expansion of the welfare system would lead to a power vacuum in the black community if black men are unable to support and provide for their families. So Lyndon Baines Johnson did exactly what Daniel Patrick Moynihan told him not to do. The reason why they don't want people to know their history or learn history or be able to read books is because when you have those capabilities, you recognize how absolutely sinister and how avowedly racist Lyndon Baines Johnson was. Don't believe me? Check his record in the Senate, right? Every time there was a measure to help black Americans, he voted against it. All right. So here's an article I read in the Tampa Bay Times called A Generation Lost by Philip Gailey from 1992, uploaded in 2005. Looking for something to read the other night, I came upon Daniel Patrick Moynihan's family and nation. Inside was tucked a letter to Democratic senator from New York, handwritten me in 1986, the year his book was published. He had read his story in the New York Times under my byline about a widely acclaimed television documentary Bill Moyers had done on the disintegration of the black family. Moynihan gently reminded me that he had tried to address this subject long before Moyers, who had been President Lyndon Baines Johnson's press secretary, got around to it 
as a television commentator. When Moynihan first raised the issue back in the 1960s, when he was Labor Department official, when he was a Labor Department official, and again in 1970, when he was a counselor to President Richard Nixon, he was denounced as a racist. Yes, Daniel Patrick Moynihan was denounced as a racist. Denounced as a racist by whom? By white feminist and CIA operative Gloria Steinem. Gloria Steinem had an edict out that the women's movement was only supposed to focus on gender issues. Nothing political, nothing social, nothing economic, and nothing racial. Only gender, women, issues. They triggered and misled black women with feminist propaganda and started doing hit pieces on Daniel Patrick Moynihan. And they said that he was blaming black women for the ills of the black community and poverty. So the white feminists told black women, well, that's typical matriarchal lies to control women. And it worked. So black women and white feminists accused the government of prioritizing black men over women. And most of the affirmative action incentives went to white women and black women. And this is what led to the secretary HR department employee office worker boom for women. While illegal immigrants came and forced black men out of the labor pool. So Daniel Patrick Moynihan said you need a jobs and training bill for black men or there would be a power vacuum in the black community. What do I mean by power vacuum? Um, if you don't have no money, you don't have no authority. So Daniel Patrick Moynihan understood if black men are broke, they're not going to have the authority to lead their families. Right. I have a um, video of him on um, national network television. And it was a debate about his Negro family report. And he was saying uh, black people should get preferential treatment in the jobs market. Right. And the gentleman that was debating him was like, oh, so you, you want to give black people preferential treatment over white people? And Daniel Patrick Moynihan's response was, you can't have a man in chains and in slavery 200, 300 years, then let him free and say, catch up. Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help provide context for today's public affairs issues. Our guest today on Meet the Press is the author of the controversial study, The Negro Family, Mr. Daniel P. Monahan. His report, prepared when he was Assistant Secretary of Labor, at first was warmly praised, yet has recently been sharply criticized. Mr. Monahan, a professor of political science, is now at Wesleyan University. He was one of the drafters of the nation's anti-poverty program, and he has just been appointed by Mayor-elect Lindsay to the New York City Poverty Task Force. And I will have the first questions from Mr. Monahan from Lawrence E. Spivak, permanent member of the Meet the Press panel. Uh, uh, Mr. Here's a, here's a quotation, for example, from a recent article by William Ryan, a Harvard psychologist who criticizes your report in The Nation. And this is what he writes, quote, the implicit point is that Negroes tolerate promiscuity, illegitimacy, one-parent families, welfare dependency, and everything else that is supposed to follow. Now, that's the criticism he makes of well, your report. Now, how do you answer those I, I, I can't. I'm not responsible for the fact that he can't read. Um, as, as E. Franklin Frazier said, and I quoted from him at some length, there is a lot of evidence that the Negro middle-class family, when it, when it gets its opportunity, gets a bearing, is if anything more stern, more rigid, uh, than most. But uh, the evidence is simply clear. Negro Americans live like any other Americans, and when they're forced into the ghetto and forced into disorganization, they have no more better protection well, than anyone else. I'd like to ask you one specific question sure. which the New York Times quotes you today as uh, saying. You say that 44% of the children in Harlem are illegitimate. Now, how do you know that? Those are statistics in New York City Department of Health, sir. Ten, ten health districts in central Harlem the area with the, which the great American sociologist Kenneth Clark described in his Har U report 
as having undergone a massive deterioration of the fabric of society and its institutions, and right under our prosperous noses that happened. That hasn't existed for 50 years. That's happened in the last 15 years in this America, and we've been sitting around thinking things have been getting better, and they haven't been getting better for those children. And I think we, I for one, if you think, see what people can face for the civil rights movement in the way of sheriffs, in the way of howling mobs, in the way of the disapproval of their entire society, well, I think, I, I would hope certainly I'm willing to face the disapproval of a few uh, white liberals from Boston who think I shouldn't raise the subject because it's impolite. Mr. Novak. Mr. Moynihan, in your report you say, quote, equality of opportunity almost ensures inequality of results, unquote. Are you proposing preferential treatment on the hiring of Negroes? I believe this country owes the American Negro his back wages, yes. Should the federal government uh, support preferential treat treatment for Negroes then? I believe that, I believe what President Johnson said in his Howard University speech, you cannot keep a man in chains for three centuries and take the chains off and, and say suddenly, okay, you're free to run the race of life with anybody else. They have to be made, people have to be given the opportunity to compete with effective resources. And I believe that we should make a special effort so he said if you don't do this jobs and training bill for black men and you expand the welfare system that would have a negative effect on the black family the feminists labeled Moynihan anti-feminist they said that he was trying to naturalize patriarchy to put women in complete subjugation of men all right so white feminist propaganda told black women that black men want to be patriarchs like white men so that they can do what the white man does to them which is oppress and abuse them and he has all the power and all the rights so then the jobs bill was seen as a bill to oppress women with money and resources so the feminists protested against that jobs bill and the training for black men. So black women, you can no longer ask, well, we're the black men. We're the black men providers and protectors with generational wealth. Well, you protested against that in the 70s. And now you strong, independent, broken in debt without a husband, just like you want it. Uh, virulently. And so you have that, they create this system, and the system literally says we will give you more money if you don't marry the father of your children to break down the black family. You fast forward today, you, you look at the circumstance in black America, how black Americans are suffering, and how they can't attribute it back to the very same people. They actually go say, we need more governance in order to fix this, right? Because you have these things like BLM that pop up that are sponsored by the government that convince black Americans to riot and to loot down their own neighborhoods to set them backwards even further. And they are completely deluded in believing that it's the white man, deluded in believing that it's the white man, white man, white man, white man, white man, white man that is causing these issues when it has always been the government that has caused these issues and believing that it's the white man that is causing these issues when it has always been the government they are completely deluded in believing that it's the white man that is causing these issues when it has always been the government that has these issues when it has always been the government. Candace, in the 1950s, 1960s, when these laws were enacted on the black community, who was running almost entirely every political position in this country? The white man. Every president up until this point, every governor, every mayor was a white male, a.k.a. the white man. The white man is the government, Candace. Always has been, always will be. Every black politician you see are only following the guidelines and the laws left behind by their racist white male predecessors. So then it still traces back to the white man. So don't try to absolve a room full of white men of their responsibility in the erosion of the black family. These are all sons of the immigrants that took what black people worked for. 
And notice they always talk about policies, right? The policies, the policies destroyed the black community, but won't pinpoint what those policies were. Because if they did, they'd have to admit the white supremacist agenda behind those policies. And that policy was eugenics. And they are completely deluded in believing that it's the white man that is causing these issues when it has always been the government that has caused these issues. And abortion is an infuriating topic, again, not knowing history, seeing women parrot things like my body, my choice, and not knowing where that literal birth control propaganda and abortion propaganda came from. Well, you should read Margaret Sanger's writings. Oh. She wrote a piece called Birth Control Propaganda. She was another avowed racist and avowed eugenicist, not just towards black Americans, because at that time, Italians were coming in, Germans were coming in. I think I saw on your Wikipedia, your grandpa came in in 1890. They hated them too. Uh, they were racist toward them too. And that is the problem right there with Candace Owens. You know, a black Caribbean woman that is married to a white man speaking on behalf of black Americans. That's a total cop out right there. No way you think Margaret Sanger had the same intentions for Italians and Irish immigrants that she had for black Americans because it was called the Negro Project. It wasn't called the Italian Project. It wasn't called the Irish Project. They were not considered undesirables. Ethnic whites like Irish and French and Italians soon got their honorary whiteness and white privileges. That's why every police department and every fire department in America is run by legacy Irish and Italian Americans. What were black men given? Mass incarceration. Her thing was when she wrote this to Dr. Clarence Gamble, Dr. Clarence Gamble of the Proctor and Gamble family, a rich kid who inherited a million dollars just for being born in the right family, who was also concerned about immigrants and black people procreating. She wrote in a letter, you can go look it up. We don't want word to get out that we want to sterilize the black race. So how do we package to them? She said, we can make an appeal to their ministers. We can go to their churches and tell them to sell this sort of a thing. And so it's infuriating. I, I, I look forward to the day when we can stand outside of a Planned Parenthood clinic and it will be a Holocaust museum for the black people that have been murdered systematically, intentionally mm -hmm. by racists. And so it's infuriating. I, I, I look forward to the day when we can stand outside of a Planned Parenthood clinic and it will be a Holocaust museum for the black people that have been murdered systematically, intentionally mm -hmm. by racists. Yeah. So they wanted a soft genocide and a quiet ethnic cleansing. Without guns and tanks and said we need to trick these undesirables into actually sterilizing themselves. Hence, Planned Parenthood. If it ain't planned, abort it and trick black women into aborting their future generations. Then abortion became birth control. And black women now have, what, 25 million abortions on record. And then who did Margaret Sanger and the Procter and Gamble families use to push the propaganda of Planned Parenthood, the black pastors and churches, right? And this is around the same time we started seeing the doctrine in the black churches change. It went from the families, the foundation and the fathers, the head of the family to black women, thou art loosed, right? Then all of a sudden it was black women come and go as you please with no consequences, no responsibilities, no blame. Then the family message turned to prosperity gospel for single mothers. So it was the black boule gatekeepers, the clergy, and those in education that led us straight to the fire. So Candace put the blame for the ethnic cleansing of black Americans here in America solely on who it belongs to. Systemic white and Zionist supremacy. You know the same Zionists that you say secretly run the U.S. government? 
So what Kundus Owens has recently been saying is that, hey, that you have the Bloods and the Crips, right? That essentially Jewish people are a gang or there is a gang of Jews that are apparently, I, these are her words, that are often people that are, are, are blackmailing people. <laughs> that's, that's their, they're doing all these things. And upon you calling them out, that they use anti-Semitism as a shield, bruh. And so what I believe is something that should be explored is whether or not what's happening is that just like within all communities, there are gangs, right? Gangs can form, we understand this. In the black community, we've got the Bloods and we've got the Crips. Well, imagine if the Bloods and the Crips were doing horrific things, murdering people, controlling people with blackmail. Huh? And then every time a person spoke out about it, the Bloods and the Crips would call those p people racist. But what if that is what is happening right now in Hollywood, if there is just a very small ring of specific people who are using uh, the fact that they are Jewish to shield themselves from any criticism? I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon? The ethnic cleansing of the black community here in America was a WASP, Zionist, CIA collaboration.